Indeed, if in our simulation we would increase the sample size further and further, the standard error of beta 1 hat would converge towards zero. And this means beta 1 hat would actually converge against this true value beta 1. And that the OLS estimator converges against some fixed value holds typically in many examples. So there are formal conditions uh, that can be satisfied. For example, would be the case if our observations were drawn independently from the same data generating process, or one could also relax this assumption and say the observations are drawn from an ergodic stationary stochastic process and they must satisfy some non collinearity conditions. But I don't want to go into these technical details in this course. Let's say basically for all the examples we look at, um, the standard error of an OLS estimator converges to zero as the sample size grows large and the OLS estimator beta hat k converges against some number and we call this coefficient beta star k. And it's often referred to as the coefficient of the best linear predictor. So in our simulation set of these beta stars, so that's a vector basically for all, for the constant and for all explanatory variables, were equal to the coefficients beta that we specified in the simulation and which measured actually the causal effect. So let's say beta 1 measured the causal effect for x of y. However, it's not always true that these beta stars, the best linear predictors, the coefficients of the best linear predictors against which the OLS estimator converges are equal to this causal effect. And it's important to understand when they converge against uh, these coefficients that measure the causal effect and when these coefficients of best linear predictors are different coefficients to understand what an OLS estimator actually estimates. And we will discuss this much more detail later. These coefficients of the best linear predictor against which the OLS estimator usually converges can also be mathematically formalized as a solution of a so-called population equivalent of the least squares problem. So population means we, we don't take some finite sample, but we basically look at all possible realizations of the error term and of the axis and, and the y's and take expected values for these. So we treat all of those as random variables. So assume we write our linear regression model as y is equal to beta zero plus beta one, x one, and so on, plus an error term u. Now, you could think that this error term, this random variable is a function of this beta. So think of this beta just being some numbers that you can pick. Then the error term is just given by by y minus beta 0 minus beta 1 x1 and so on. And this beta star, the coefficients of the best linear predictor, are basically those values of the betas that minimize the squared, um, the square of the error term or the expected value of the square of the error term. And that's essentially the population equivalent of the least squares problem. But you don't have to dig into detail, but that's how you could also f define these coefficients of the best linear predictor. And that's why are they called in this way um, um, as a population equivalent of the least squares problem. And our OLS estimator beta hat basically converges against these beta stars.